Alright, welcome back folks to Terraria. We are here in the Corruption to face the second boss that most people encounter, the Eater of Worlds. Uh, if you want to run it often enough in uh, the Corruption, you'll see all these little Eaters of Souls. Eventually you'll see, uh, I think they're called Devourers of Worlds, or Devourer of Souls, I'm not sure. It's a, a very large worm like the ones I had before, the little tiny things that grow through the ground. There are large ones. Then there's the Eater of Worlds. Uh, he can either be summoned by dropping into these chasms, carefully, and busting the uh, spheres at the bottom. The first one will do apparently nothing, uh, but may call down a meteorite. Second one, same thing. Uh, they may also summon up a goblin invasion, which, if that happens, God help you early on. Uh, the third one you bust, though, will always summon the Eater of Worlds. The alternate option, however, is killing uh, any of the creatures in here, the Eater of Souls, the Devourer of Souls, um, and collecting rotten chunks, then taking vile powder, and once you get a certain amount, I believe it's uh, 20 rotten chunks and a quite a good amount of vile powder, take it to a demonic altar, and you craft worm food. Now, when you take the worm food, it's much like the suspicious of the eye. <laughs> Eater of Worlds has woken. Now, this boss battle takes a very long time. As you can see, he is freaking massive. And you attack each in each body segment individually. So, if you I were to bust him, say, right there where I hit him, he would split at that point, a new head would be created, just like Centipede, and uh, both worms would then start attacking you. So you have to defeat pretty much every single body segment individually to defeat the Eater of Worlds. A pain, but not insurmountable if you have something that passes through enemies, like shurikens, or these unholy arrows, or jester's arrows, any of those work fairly well. Um, things like the Ball of Hurt also pass through the body segments, like this, and uh, work fairly well, but it doesn't do the best damage. So if you have the fiery one, I don't know why you'd be fighting uh, the Eater of Worlds at this point if you have the, the Flaming Ball, but uh, that also works well. Mostly you just want to do as much damage as you can until eventually he'll uh, break. And when he does that, you just keep fighting until you uh, subdivide him. So I'm going to keep fighting this dude here. I will most likely speed up the video or put some music or something. There we go, get a piece and a new head is cool. Um, yeah, but I will continue fighting here and... Uh, catch up with you again when I won. Back real fast to mention that you most definitely want to have as many health potions as you possibly can, as high of health as you possibly can, and lots and lots of ammunition. This guy does not go down lightly, and if you miss and don't have enough ammunition, you are pretty much screwed, because he will follow you all across the map. The first time I ran into the Eater of Worlds was completely by accident. He killed me pretty much instantly, and then followed me back to my spawn point. So... He will not relent until you're dead. It doesn't matter if it becomes daytime, if you leave the corruption, he will always follow you. So, make real damn sure that you uh, are prepared before you fight. That or prepared, be prepared to lose a lot of money dying every time.
And there I did not listen to my own advice and ran out of ammo. Wonderful. So there he goes. When he dies, he, just like the other one, drops a whole bunch of health, uh, a bunch of shadow scales, and, uh, let's see, shadow scales, ran lots of random uh, corruption type stuff. He'll drop some vile powder sometimes. Um, almost always drops demonite ore. That's what this would be. See, 27 demonite ore, 1 demonite ore. Let me drop the lens and I can pick that up. There we go. And he also always drops a single piece of the shadow armor. Um, it's random, which check you get. I've gotten multiple full sets at this point. It is worth money, so it's good to just get one set, and then you can sell the rest for a good amount to your merchant, if you have one. Or anyone else who buys and sells stuff. So, once you've done that, you can run on back to your house, possibly using the magic mirror if you have one. And I will show you Demonite Ore and what you can make with it. Go. Ah, I hate that yellow sky. It bugs my eyes. Alright, so here with uh, the forge. Come on, move a little faster here. I think recording is slowing down my uh, scroll bar here. There we go. Demon Eye Whore. Once we have Demon Eye Whore, here we go. The Breaker, Nightmare Pickaxe, Shadow Armor. Light's Bane, War Axe of Night, Demon Bow, all that stuff. Very nice. Does great damage for early on. What did I just do? Oh, I just shot it. And, uh, yeah, so, full set of uh, Shadow Armor. I believe that increases. Oh, let me just check. I can uh, put it all on here and see what the bonus is from it. We have a full set of Shadow Armor. Ah, increased melee speed. So you'll see. Yeah, that's, you can just go to town on these guys. And uh, there's a weapon later in the game called the Miramasa, which is the fastest sword in the game. That, mixed with this armor, mixed with uh, an item later on that also increases your attack speed, you can pretty much just hold down the mouse button and never stop attacking, ever. Pretty awesome. So, definitely, uh, definitely worth a few fights with the Eater of Worlds to get that armor. Alright, well, that was the Eater of Worlds. To the next time for... Skeletron, the final boss so far. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.